Now I'll pass it off to QSide CEO and co-founder, Chad Topaz, to talk a little bit more about QSide. Emily and Isabel, thank you so much. And give me a brief moment here to get my screen sharing. All right, how does that look? Look okay? All right, so. Um, thank you, everybody. We are honored um, and grateful to have you here today at the inaugural Data for Justice Conference. Um, we all know that today's main attractions are the one dozen phenomenal speakers that you're going to hear from. And I think we also know that seeing the words opening remarks on a conference program usually does not evoke excitement for everyone. Um, but I would like to try to rise to the challenge and I'm going to do it by spending six or seven short minutes giving you just a brief taste of what QSide does. Um, now, like all of you, we are about justice. We are about justice, for example, in the arts, um, where we were the first to study the demographic diversity of artists whose works are held in major US museums um, on a large scale. This study had broad impact, and, and one of those was an invitation to collaborate with the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC, in order to better understand uh, diversity in their collections. We went beyond analyzing what was in the museum's collection and studied what was actually displayed on the walls and when. And we discovered a severe underrepresentation of women and people of color. We were able to map it out in space and time, uh, create interactive tools to explore the results and share them with museum staff empowered to change their curatorial decisions. Going beyond museums, we have partnered with Lifewater Beverages, who are staunch supporters of equity, diversity, and inclusion in the arts as the research providers for their Life Unseen initiative. And in order to um, understand broad trends in American popular arts and culture, we've studied diversity in Hollywood films, in pop music, in fashion design, and we've looked at many axes of identity. So for example, among top creative contributors to box office films, women are underrepresented by a factor of two as compared to the US population, and Latinx people are underrepresented by a factor of four. Among fashion designers at top fashion shows, black women are underrepresented by a factor of 13. Um, and we could not positively infer any of the designers to have a known physical disability, um, despite somewhere around 13% of the US population having a disability. So this Life Unseen campaign brings attention to all these different axes of identity um, in the arts and, um, and, and tries to provide further evidence of inequities. Uh, and we think it will prompt change and provide a benchmark against which to measure that change. Most of us, um, especially this week, but most of us are well aware of gross injustices in the American criminal justice system. Um, so for example, uh, people of color tend to receive much harsher criminal sentences than white counterparts who commit similar crimes. Um, you will hear more about this in one of our talks later today, um, but while this phenomenon has been understood at the macroscopic level for quite some time, the, the government's data policies have precluded us from understanding specifically what judges might be displaying racial inequity in their sentencing patterns. So QSide, as you will hear later, has cracked that nut and created an online data exploration tool where for the first time you can look up the sentencing patterns of individual federal judges and see whether or not the sentences that they give are within the range recommended by federal guidelines. So for example, you would discover that this judge here um, gives more lenient sentences to white defendants at about double the rate of racially minoritized ones and gives harsher sentences to racially minoritized defendants at almost double the rate of white ones. So our goal is to take the work we've done on federal courts and bring it to all 50 states so that we can all work to make sure that the judges who are appointed or elected to state courts are fair. We're concerned with criminal justice at every stage and every level. And so we also work to have local impact. Uh, the work we did with our regional court watch project was picked up by our county DA. We're also thinking about policing. So in my town, there was a picture of Hitler up in the local police station. And um, you can't make this up. In response to this discovery, um, as well as other allegations of misconduct, some community members demanded public accountability and change. Um, the response of some members of the police department was to illegally search the data of the citizens who had critiqued them. Some police departments in large towns and large cities have now chosen to make policing data available to the public online, and we applaud that transparency. 
Unfortunately, that transparency is lacking in nearly every small town in the United States. Thanks to public records laws, QSIDE has succeeded in getting our local police department's logs and incident reports from the past few years. And we are building a data transparency portal to bring our community a better understanding of what our police are doing. But we're not just concerned about our own small town, and that's why we're creating and meticulously documenting a process, right? A process that other small towns can use to replicate what we are doing here. On another note, justice and healthcare are inextricably linked, and QSIDE is trying to help. So in many states, it is legal, or at least not explicitly illegal, for a pharmacist to refuse to fill a prescription, if doing so conflicts with that pharmacist's personal beliefs. Um, while there are all too many anecdotal reports of these pharmacy refusals, we don't really know much else. So where do they happen? How often do they happen? Are the drugs for birth control or emergency contraception or HIV prophylaxis or hormone therapy for transgender individuals or something else, right? What groups are most impacted by the refusals? The Q side is working on answering these questions so that we can better understand the problem and so that we can move towards ethical data tools that would let individuals make better informed choices about where to get their prescriptions filled. Education can be a powerful force for justice, um, but our systems are plagued with injustice. One tool that can address historical oppression and exclusion in education is affirmative action, but the legal landscape for affirmative action is fraught. So if a college or university wants to diversify its student body, for example, and if affirmative action is not allowed, what can they do? QSIDE's work on this issue um, can project the share of different demographic groups on the college campus, uh, shown here for UC Berkeley. And moreover, in places where affirmative action is illegal, our work can be used to predict the effects of interventions, such as increased applicant recruiting, uh, increased matriculation rates um, in minoritized student groups. So overall, QSIDE works in these five areas, diversity and inclusion in arts media, criminal justice, healthcare equity, education equity, environmental justice. What I've shown you just now is just a small subset of what we've done so far. Officially, we became a 501c3 nonprofit towards the end of 2019, which means that we as an organization are the age of a very young toddler. Um, and yet in that time, we feel we've been able to have a big impact. In these brief remarks, I have focused on the justice part of Data for Justice. Um, and we at QSIDE were elated to be part of a big and enthusiastic and inspiring and effective community of organizations who all work on social justice. And we're especially grateful to those of you who have joined us here today. Thank you. Um, in my closing remarks, brief remarks at the end of the day today, I'm going to focus on the data part of Data for Justice. That is, I'm going to say a few brief non-technical words about uh, QSIDE's unique strengths in data science and mathematical modeling and how they can contribute to the good fight. So as I said a few minutes ago, the main goal for today is to hear from our 12 amazing speakers. I know you're gonna learn from them. You'll be inspired by their work. Thinking beyond today though, I want to invite you to become involved with QSIDE so you can join our affiliate program, our consortium, you can become a sponsor, you can make critical donations so that we continue to survive and thrive, you can attend our programs and much more. I welcome the chance to hear from you anytime, so please just drop me a line if you want to connect or discuss ways to partner. Um, and now Isabel, I will hand it back to you. Thank you.